Before Walmart, there was Woolworths. And before Amazon.com, there was Montgomery Ward. The earliest incarnations of the types of retail outlets we know today emerged in the late 19th century, when chain and department stores were born. A new trend in mass consumption ballooned as advances in technology collided with the growing market of American consumers. When people went shopping in the 1870s, they bought local things in local stores. This started to change after the Civil War, and in many ways because of the Civil War. For example, men's shoes and pants now came in standard sizes, which they had never done before the Civil War. But during the war, they had to produce them quickly and get them on soldiers. By the turn of the century, technology like sewing machines and advancements like the assembly line produced all sorts of consumer goods more cheaply and more quickly. Expanding railroad lines coast to coast also made it easier to ship products to far-flung small towns. In 1886, there's a watch company by the name of Sears Roebuck, which decides to sell its watches by catalog. And then over the years, it starts to expand the things that it will sell by catalog to the point where by 1900, the Sears company is taking 10,000 orders a day. And those goods are delivered on the railroads, uh, and they're delivered across the country within days. And so areas that had been incredibly remote and isolated farm communities, even just 20 years before, were now connected up. City dwellers, meanwhile, shopped at five and 10 cent store chains like Woolworths, or department stores like Montgomery Ward and Marshall Fields in Chicago, or Macy's in New York. Urban populations boomed, and workers tended to have bigger paychecks to spend. They were drawn to the glamour and convenience of the stores that sold everything from cosmetics to cooking utensils. The accessibility and appeal of so many products under one roof created a new generation of American consumers.